In Mystery History's opinion, the ancient ruins found upon the plateau of Giza are some of, if not the most, heavily debated, heavily guarded, and most academically protected ancient site on Earth. Yet it remains one of the most talked about, mysterious, intriguing ancient stonework of them all. Many people are now aware of the anomalies, which were once tightly controlled secrets, surrounding the exterior features of the build, and more importantly, the achievements that these feats once were. These inexplicable factors, the size of the megalithic exoskeleton, the vastly different ages of the casing stones, are now thought by many as the defining motive for a cover-up regarding the pyramid's true age and original purpose. Media blackouts, counterintelligence, and many other outlandish conspiracies now rife among the research of the site, from giants to UFOs, the ideas and theories people have put forward for their function, or indeed, what could be hidden in voids constantly discovered yet to be penetrated, these hidden rooms, along with their ancient entrances, remain a complete enigma, even in recent years, as advances in penetrative radar become a reality and accessible to self-funded individuals and research teams, more and more voids, unexplained heat anomalies, and even air shafts not known of before, continue to be discovered within these enormous mystifying structures. Yet, as mentioned, the subculture, many genuine yet misguided in their investigative method, yet also many funded individuals involved in many other hard-to-deny subjects, has successfully swamped the field with dis and or misinformation, creating opinionated followings with a successfully corrupted impartiality, deceptively manipulated into becoming said misinformation's advocates, rather than whence they came, an open mind, a skill for discussion, and an unbiased critical approach to subjects whose true nature are actively being protected. The predictably far fewer articles, books, and other logical, critical, impartial to all but fact, unwavering competent research done by many capable individuals, although adrift within an ocean of fallacy, shines much light upon some highly compelling yet albeit highly controversial features of the Plateau of Giza. Features which may one day lead us to ultimately unlocking the pyramid's secrets and allowing us to finally understand what these structures' past functions truly were, not only in detail, but perhaps in an attempt of replication. During our own research, we have found some interesting similarities between Giza and Bosnia, among other lesser-known pyramid structures. And this curious yet continually reoccurring feature is now being more frequently discovered all over the world. The Great Pyramid of Bosnia, for example, a site discovered by Samir Osmanagic, has an ingenious river, which, after three years of research, was confirmed by him and his team to have had an artificial current. The reason for this is currently unknown, but it seems water was a significant factor in the past function of these ancient structures. Water is a curious thing, and in many situations, acts just like that of electricity. It runs in currents and travels through tubes like electric through cables. Yet no one seems to know what electricity is. We hypothesize that these water features are of tremendous significance when it comes to understanding the true function of these incredible structures. But I digress. The plateau has always intrigued me. Although buried by a desert sand, the solid sandstone below is of an unimaginable size and seemingly level, over 40 feet deep in some places, yet no one truly understands its origins. Indeed. Structures as large as the pyramids would need impressive foundations. But the plateau, it seems, is far too large and, if man-made, bafflingly sparse of any ruins, structures which one would have presumed would have been the reason for its enormous construction. There is, however, another hypothesis. A legend that told of a lost labyrinth, a secret underground lair as big as a town a secret underground structure so large and thus so easy to get lost within, it became known as the Labyrinth. 
long spoke of but always dismissed as mythological. This due to a lack of any substantial evidence for its existence. That is, until a few years ago, when a groundbreaking rediscovery was made, yet unfortunately it seems, this groundbreaking event was somehow masterfully stifled, not shared by mainstream media, funded institutions with their armory of literature and magazines alike. Thus, it merely becomes an observational exercise in yet another display of the influence our currently controlling institutions have over public opinion, preventing an underground city of gigantic proportions buried beneath Giza, never successfully achieving public notoriety. The sand of Harara was scanned by a Belgian-Egyptian expedition team in 2008 in an effort to research something known as the Quarry Theory, suggested by Petri in 1889, following his finding of a great artificial stone surface measuring 304 meters by 244 meters. Petri interpreted the enormous artificial stone plateau as the foundation of the labyrinth, concluding that the building itself, although long believed to have been totally demolished in the Ptolemaic period, had in fact survived and lay hidden for millennia. The surveys proved its foundation remained unpenetrated and still laid undiscovered beneath the sandstone, never lost, the possibility of the results being that of the roof of the labyrinth, all but proven true. The following is an excerpt from the DIG's official report. Quote, Underneath this upper zone, below the artificial stone surface, appears, in spite of the turbid effect of the groundwater, at a depth of 8 to 12 meters, a grid structure of gigantic size, made of a very highly resistant material like granite stone. This proves the presence of a colossal archaeological feature, which has to be reconsidered as the roof of the still existing labyrinth." End quote. Are the legends true? Does the labyrinth of Giza still lay hidden, unexplored beneath the sands of Egypt? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Hey guys, so a few months back I shared with you the story of adventurous geologists who had trekked far into the cold wilderness of Russia in an effort to catalog the largest megalithic site on Earth. So remote, they are steeped in legends of snow yetis and mysterious monsters devouring all who dare to venture into these remote areas. When I shared the amazing images of these stone structures, many argued that they were natural formations. Maybe because they struggled to conceive such enormous ancient ruins in such remote places. Discoveries that seem to be many hundreds of thousands of years old. Maybe even as old as the giant sphinx. More and more is being learnt about them. With ever more daring explorations of the ruins being undertaken, a team discovered a vault in one of the stone megaliths. An access vault that led them into an artificially made stone cavern system. These underground structures are truly massive and are undoubtedly constructed by an intelligent builder. Hidden for many millennia, these caverns are not only massive but constructed using blocks placed upon one another that are over 50 feet in length in some instances, making these stones many thousands of tons in weight, seemingly placed effortlessly into the shape of underground walls. This discovery has not really shed light upon how the ancients built such structures but rather push their apparent capabilities farther from our understanding. Not only are these structures purpose of vast mystery, but they also contain place stones bigger than any we've ever discovered, even eclipsing the unfinished stone found at the ancient Chinese quarry known as Yangshan. A stone can be found here half cut away from the bedrock, in excess of 16,000 tons, thought by scholars throughout time to have been left at the quarry due to them not being able to move it. Yet, here we have stones placed into a cave system designed which even outweigh Yangshan. This not only proves they could move them, but lift them and work them. Just how many quote natural formations are really just extremely weathered, once extremely large stone built structures? Maybe there are many stone granite hills and even maybe mountains that dot our earth, which were before millennia of rain, grand structures of a forgotten people.